Você tá ligado que para fazer o seu negócio voar, né? Você precisa aí vender online, certo? E eu sei que você acredita que criar um site para vendas possa ser algo caro, complicado. É, na verdade até é, mas não aqui com o Pedido Digital, uma plataforma online que opera diferente de tudo o que você já viu por aí. Sem taxa de adesão, sem mensalidade, sem porcentagem nas vendas, muito fácil e simples de configurar, pessoal. Em questão de minutos, você já sai vendendo. É sério, minutos. E eu que não sou bobo nem nada, né? Já fiz a loja do canal também. Saiba mais sobre o pedido digital no link que eu deixo na descrição desse vídeo. E, meu irmão, bora ser dono do seu próprio negócio, meu. Bora vender. Não demole, não. Fala, fiotes! Eu sou o Kalil e você está no Gamer Liu Games, tudo bem? Obrigado por vir, espero que tudo esteja tranquilo por aí, seja bem-vindo. Galera, é o seguinte, hoje nós vamos ver aqui reagir juntos ao trailer, né, aos bastidores, enfim, ao que foi postado pela Playstation recentemente, de nome, um, um vídeo, né, de nome God of War Ragnarok, moldando a história. História. É um vídeo de 10 minutos sobre God of War Ragnarok, que eu não vi ainda pela correria que eu tô aqui, mas que eu quero ver junto de vocês, tá bom? Deixa o seu like, compartilha o conteúdo e, por gentileza, comenta o que você achou de tudo que você viu aqui, tá? Vamos comentar aqui, ver... Bora! We're coming off of God of War 2018. How do you top that? How do you deliver something that players will love maybe just as much as God of War 2018? The pressure was tremendous. My name is Ariel Angelotti and I am the senior producer for Narrative. My name is Richard Gobert. I'm the story lead for God of War Ragnarok. I'm Jody Kupsko, and I'm the supervising dialogue designer. It's my job to shape the story along with our writing team, our narrative director, and game director. As a producer, it's my job to help build a team to create that content, um, to own the schedule in realizing that content. I oversee the dialogue production throughout the entire titles. Every line of dialogue that you hear, every human vocalization and effort and grunt, uh, our team touches. So I'm a man now, like you? No, we are not men. We are more than that. The responsibility is far greater. In the story of God of War 2018, We find Kratos seemingly having turned over a new leaf in the Norse lands. He lives a quiet life hidden in the woods with his wife, Faye, and their son, Atreus. And the story starts with them mourning her death. And we learn that she made a final request before she passed away. She wanted them to spread her ashes from the highest peak in all the nine realms. He's scared of being a bad father, a bad influence, and as a result, It's made him an absent father. His greatest fear is that he's passed that evil that's inside of him onto his son. You are too quick to temper. You are rash, insubordinate, and out of control. This will not stand. You will honor your mother and abandon this path you have chosen. It is not too late. They befriend Freya who is an exiled Vanir goddess who used to be married to Odin. They meet Mimir, the self-proclaimed smartest man alive, who serves as their guide and their confidant. And they meet the Holdra brothers, Brock and Sindri, who are world-class weaponsmiths who end up their main source of upgrades and equipment. Now among the enemies they make are the Aesir gods, whose leader is none other than Odin, someone we never meet in God of War 2018, but who casts a very long and dark shadow over the Nine Realms. There are consequences to killing a god! Why? How do you know? How do you know? After many adventures, Kratos and Atreus end up fulfilling Mom's wishes, and over the course of that journey, they find out more about each other and about themselves, 
and finally find a common ground between them. They become the close family unit that Faye hoped that they would become. In God of War Ragnarok, we fast forward a few years and little Atreus is now a teen and they're back to hiding out in their home in the woods in Midgard. During the course of the previous game's events, they were forced to kill Odin's grandchildren, Magni and Modi, the sons of Thor. Thor does a lot of the lion's share of Odin's dirty work, and as a consequence, he's a very violent, unstable personality. At the end of the last game, they were also forced to kill Baldr, the son of Odin and Freya, and that has its own set of consequences. He was a very powerful chess piece for Odin, one that Odin is incredibly bitter about losing. Freya has vowed vengeance against them for the killing of her son. Kratos and Atreus didn't want to kill him. They were friends with Freya, but Baldr tried to kill her in front of them, and Kratos had no other option in the moment but to kill him to save Freya's life, even though it meant losing Freya's friendship. I will parade your cold body from every corner of every realm and feed your soul to the vilest filth in hell that is my promise he saved your life he robbed me of everything <laughs> Eita, mano. Caraca. everything his death is also foretold to bring about thimble winter which is a brutal three-year winter that is then followed by Ragnarok. It's an apocalyptic war between all the Norse gods, the giants, the dwarves, and the elves, and an army of the dead. They're all destined to fight in a battle that basically ends the world. Kratos is understandably worried about his son and what it means for him. You get to go on this journey with how Atreus grows into a young adult and how Kratos grows into his next era in his life and really see kind of the parent that he's striving to be, but the person he's striving to be. I find that tale so incredibly relatable. We had started shooting um, you know, plenty of content before the pandemic hit. In fact, the week before we all went uh, work from home, we were doing a shoot. I remember being on and off that set, running back to the office and having to talk to studio leadership about what was going down and um, how this was going to impact us moving forward. And those were trying times. For us, it was a very unique challenge because we had to bring in actors and we had to record them. And so we had to look at different ways of adapting our typical motion capture process and dialogue recording process so we can continue production and continue at the quality that we wanted for our players and our fans. We had uh, some actors stand in for other characters, actors who were already, you know, who were like core to one of the scenes, um, might just be able to play a background character in another scene to be able to avoid a situation where too many people were, were on set on any given day. We avoided compromising the story that we were trying to tell as a result of the pandemic and these limitations that we had to deal with. There were no cinematics that we changed. We still have the same characters in them in the final game. We just had to get a bit creative with how we shot the content. Our actor for Atreus, Sonny, is a teenage boy and his voice changed dramatically throughout the several years on this title. I don't want to fight anyone. I just want answers. We had to go in and even out that performance, so it sounds like it took place over a short period of time. That, that was a unique challenge on this one. The prophecies say Fimble Winter leads to Ragnarok. War is coming. Whether the Norse saga was going to be a trilogy or just two games was something we debated a lot. There were obviously pros and cons for either approach. So we waited for Corey Barlog to weigh in, and he did, and he said, let's do it in two. The consequence to that is, how do you wrap up the story in one game and do Ragnarok justice? How do we lead up to that and then have a big moment at the end of the game and wrap up all those loose threads? This game is bigger than what we initially like, look, envisioned. Man. There's a lot of 
important story moments that we needed to cover. There are more characters that we follow the threads of. And ultimately, it ends up feeling big and epic because there is a lot there for people to enjoy. I am very excited for folks to see this final chapter. A lot happens. Uh, we put our characters through the ringer, but we also bring them closure and we provide answers to a lot of the questions the first game posed. Olha aí. Just all of the, the new combat that we're doing and Caraca, the, mano. the new interactions. Um, Eu tava achando que era do a, primeiro there's jogo. a lot of volta, stuff that's volta, happening volta, in this volta, title volta. that I... Closure. Very excited for folks to see this final chapter. Isso aqui é novo, ó. A lot happens. Uh, we put our characters through the ringer. Olha lá, isso aqui é novo. Eles voltando para para a terra dos elfos, né? But we also bring... E ele quer colocar de novo a mão ali na luz, quer talvez encontrar a Fei, que no... quando ele tava para encontrar com ela, o Atreus tirou ele no primeiro jogo, lembra? Closure, and we provide answers to a lot of the... E aqui ele fala para não entrar, mano, que coisa. As barba branca do Chris. Questions the first game posed. Just all of the the new combat that we're doing and the the new interactions. Um, there's a, there's a lot of stuff that's happening in this title that I, I think uh, people are going to have fun with. We all have our own personal Ragnaroks to deal with, and this story is about how you process that, how you own it, and how you make it a part of yourself and grow from it. I mean, we set some stuff up. Um, at the end of last game, there's going to be some consequences this game. We're going to see how things play out between Freya and Kratos. We're going to see how the evolution of the family relationship continues. You got Brock and Sindri, the dwarves, who are kind of part of your makeshift family now. And there's going to be some other characters that we introduce that maybe going to disrupt the balance a little bit. I can't wait until players uh, get their hands on the game or are able to experience how the story unfolds for themselves. We have, I think, an incredibly well-rounded game. Very satisfying combat, beautiful and rich environments to explore, oh, outstanding character art, a lush and moving soundtrack Olha and soundscape. Aí. It's the work of hundreds of very dedicated artists, and they all have their own stories to tell. Ó. Oh. oh, meu Deus do céu. <risos> Ai, caramba. Chega logo, velho. Chega logo. Pô, galera, interessante. Gostei. Nós vimos algumas cenas novas, né? E também curiosidades de bastidores que a gente não sabia. Eu mesmo, eu não sabia que antes ainda, né? Do que aconteceu com o mundo aí, eles já estavam gravando, né? Filmando uh, a continuação do game e tiveram que improvisar usando os mesmos atores principais, muitas das vezes, como coadjuvantes ou NPCs para não trazer muita gente dentro do estúdio de captura e continuar fazendo o bom trabalho né, que eles tinham planejado. Como eles falaram, nada foi alterado, nenhuma cutscene, nada. Eles mantiveram aquilo, tudo que eles tinham em mente. E, ai cara, eu não vejo a hora de pôr as mãos nesse jogo e começar a produzir conteúdo para vocês. Comenta aí como é que tá o seu hype pro Ragnarok.